I'm out here in Damascus, Virginia. This is October 24th. It is about a month since Helene um, hit this area and I'm gonna check it out. Uh, a lot of the town looks to be open now. So just gonna have to wait to see how the trail is north of here because 58 is still closed. But uh, yeah, creeper trail, pretty well destroyed. That's gonna take years to put back. They gotta put back several of the bridges. Um, but the AT sits higher, you know, it's up on the mountain, so it should still be there. It'd just be a matter of blowdowns. And I think it'll be a matter of them opening up the roads and priorities. So I think this stretch, um, I, I would plan for it to be closed next year, or at least in the spring. But I think by next fall, I bet this will be open and it might be open by next spring already. Um, but Damascus itself, it looks like, you know, businesses are up and running. Back on the AT, I'm at mile 354 going northbound. This is about a mile north of Indian Grave Gap. I'm walking up to Beauty Spot. Just want to see how the trail is. Um, Try to go down to Uncle Johnny's in Irwin, but that road was closed and yeah, it looked pretty bad down there. That was where the hospital was like almost underwater and people were standing on the roofs. And that was where that plastics company had uh, what, like seven or eight employees killed in the flooding. So yeah, and the bridge over by Uncle Johnny's that the AT goes over is completely gone. So that area I think will not be hikeable next year, but um, so far up here, uh, it's totally clear. So I will see if I can find any blowdowns and report back. The trail up here looks totally normal um, at about 4,000 feet. So I wonder probably a lot more water, a lot more saturated down lower elevations. So um, that might be the trend here. Like the blowdowns will be at lower elevations and up high. Like this is, doesn't look like anything happened up here. I am at mile 433.3. This is Wilbur Dam Road. Um, the road was closed. Had to walk like a mile and a half up here about to enter the big laurel branch wilderness in this area nobody's been up here yet so we shall see how the trail is up here half a mile in and not a single blowdown yet um, really beautiful leaves I'm feeling pretty optimistic about the state of the trail. Carrying one of these little hand saws, super handy. Yeah, the condition of the trail over here, it's fine. Um, and talking with Jim and them at Boots Off, sounds like going south from Hampton to Laurel Falls, it's pretty good. The top of Pond Flats apparently it's like a million blowdowns. Uh, but otherwise, trail sounds pretty good. Um, sounds like they're getting it clear around 19E. So Roan Mountain, Highlands, um, those places. So I'm pretty optimistic about the state of the trail for next hiking season. All right, so here's my prediction for the AT in 2025. I think most of the trail is gonna be very hikeable 
So right after Helene, you were getting reports like a third of the trail is closed. It's definitely not going to be anywhere near that. I think realistically, the spots you're probably going to have to skip on a Nobo hike next year might be around Hot Springs to Irwin. Um, I think, I don't think you're going to have to skip much more than that. I think Damascus will be, you know, ready for business. I think that stretch north of Damascus will likely be opened up. And then through there, your Grayson Highlands, and then um, you're into kind of the Marion Bland area, Parisburg, and all that area right now. We know Southbound hikers are making it through, so there shouldn't be any issues there. Um, and then everything kind of south of Hot Springs is already open right now as well. So really, the major areas of concern are Hot Springs and Irwin, which comprise a pretty small section of trail and there's just been such an outpouring of volunteers and um, people helping out that I think a lot of the stuff's gonna get cleared super quick like the section I'm on it would take two people a weekend and it would be totally clear so um, I think you know there's gonna be these little spots where you have a ton of blowdowns and a lot of work to do but even so considering like it's not that much, that much work, right? Like even if you got a couple miles of trail, there's just a mess of blowdowns. Well, uh, an eight person crew could do that in a week. So, uh, and there's not that many sections like that. So I think if you wanted to play it safe, you could plan a hike where you start northbound from Damascus, go to Katahdin, flip back down, and then go Sobo. And I think by that time, most of it should be uh, should be pretty good to go. One misconception about the destruction of Helene is you have this idea that like everything is gone, right? But really it's just the low-lying areas, the stuff that's next to the rivers and the creeks, like that's what got hit. So, you know, Uncle Johnny's next to Nolchucky got hit pretty hard. That uh, bridge got washed away, but all the stuff above um, that hikers need, you know, the Walmart that you resupplied from, um, the restaurants there in Irwin, a lot of the hotels there in Irwood, they're all good to go. They're all got power. Um, they are open for business. So I think around Irwin, you're gonna have to make like a couple mile little detour because there's only one bridge there now and you gotta cross the Knoll Chucky. But other than that, um, you can still resupply. You can do what you need there. Well, we're here at Boots Off Hostel and Campground, mile, what, 428.5. On the Appalachian Trail. Uh, very fortunate. I mean, so many were affected uh, adversely and a lot of people lost everything. So our hearts go out to them. But um, we were very fortunate because the way we sit on this ridge line and the way the winds hit, uh, the um, basically our perimeter took a pretty good hit with trees on the upslope side. But as for damage for us, it wasn't bad at all. Um, areas of the trail um i mean it's really what's so bad it's quite small in the scheme of things um yes you know around uncle johnny's the bridge washed away and that's going to be a more challenging reroute a lot of the areas where there's blowdowns between maybe altering the trail slightly and, and just cutting a path um it, again it's nothing about that a team of sawyers can't handle and that's happening so fast there's the forest service out there there's there's hiking groups like the eastman tennessee hiking club there's other stealth uh sawyers sawyers we should call them uh that are out there doing a lot of work so every day things are opening up and sections are are becoming more accessible We're really just starting to get into leaf season there's a lot of small section hikes we can do i mean you can work around what what is down i wouldn't uh, i would tell people to uh listen to the hostels and and i mean you can look at the forest service websites you can talk to the trail maintaining groups in certain sections um, and do just a little bit of research. Definitely talk to the hostels and areas as they're communicating with everybody they can. And and really, you can do a hike. You can plan things. I would say don't just cast us all aside and that, that you can't come out here. There's a lot of places uh, that need business um, and we can't basically create a whole nother issue for the Appalachian community like Damascus and so many others. Uh, because everybody just thinks they need to stay away because by staying away you're going to lose shuttle drivers you're going to lose hostels people cannot afford to to operate 
for too long without a income. We I'm all have Odin on the Trail. That's also my YouTube. And um, I'm doing a fundraiser, which is like a toy drive, but we're collecting more than just toys. We're collecting like board games and that sort of stuff too. Uh, I can't remember the places we've been. Rome Mountain. Mountain, Mountain City. Mountain City. Newport, Tennessee. Newport. Yeah. I've been to uh, North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Headed up to Elks Garden. Um, the ATC just put out something that they opened up all the trail from Elks Garden, kind of uh, north for about 100 miles. So uh, I'm going to go up there, see what the trail looks like up there. So starting from mile 492.5 going north, it's about 24 miles north of Damascus. It's not quite the Grayson Highlands, but this section of the trail just reopened yesterday. Everything south to Damascus is still still closed. Um, yeah, you know, this is pretty high up here and there's not that many trees. So I think this trail up here probably be pretty good. The like crews have been through here, they're marking stuff and they're clearing what they can, it looks like. I think this is very fresh. Get that off the trail. So, so far what I've walked on this section is really not bad at all. And if the Forest Service has opened up this whole section, then that must also be their assessment that it is safe and it is passable. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Gives me a lot of hope for the AT for the future. I think the biggest impediments now will be the bridges that are down. So like around Irwin, and then there's a couple of those trestle bridges on the Creeper Trail north of Damascus that they need to rebuild. Um, so those could cause some reroutes and closed trails. But other than that, you know, there are bad spots, but it's not like 300 miles of blowdowns. It's stuff that a trail crew will be able to clear in a couple of days, you know, and you think they're gonna be working on it all winter. Trail clubs will be working on it all winter. Um, I think trail's gonna be fine next year. I really do. 